There are so many reasons why this tissue paper is awful to work with and why you might actually want to keep your originals intact and take a copy or a tracing of your pattern to make your own patterns and go from there. In this video, let's talk about five different ways, different methods of actually tracing out your pattern from this tissue onto something a little bit more usable. Welcome back my sewing friends. It is lovely to see all your smiling faces here again if we haven't met yet. Welcome, my name is Evelyn Wood and I run an online sewing school uh, called VintageSewingSchool.com and uh, in there one of the lessons I'm making for this month is all about pattern tracing and so it's I've got all of these fabulous ideas and so let's talk about five different methods we can use to actually trace off a pattern onto something more usable because they're like how awful is this tissue to work with? It tears all the time. Maybe you want to actually keep your all the sizes intact and so you want to just trace off your own size. Maybe you're using a vintage pattern and you want to keep that beautiful original pattern intact and then just make a copy so you keep your originals safe. So whatever the reason be, let's talk how we can actually do this. So you can maybe find a new method that works for you. And of course, I'll tell you uh, my preferred method at the end of all these. Okay, first one is you can simply use a see-through paper to uh, put on top of your big sheet of patterns <laughs> and trace through. So it needs to be see-through. So you need tracing paper, baking paper or freezer paper can often work in lieu of tracing paper as well. Um, it depends on how wide your roll is. You might have to stick bits together to get a big sheet of tracing paper but using a see-through paper on top so you can literally see through and trace off the pattern underneath. The second method that you could use is create your own light box. So often it's really hard to actually see through the paper particularly if you've got a dark uh, table underneath as well. So you can create your own light box by using a window, using a sliding door, actually uh, taping the pattern pieces so you'll want to make this all secure so it can't move onto the big window so you've got two hands and then you can trace through just like you would with tracing paper but this allows you to use thick thicker paper that's not necessarily really see-through but when you hold it up to the light it is perfectly see-through and then you can trace off your pattern using your own light box. And the next method is to use a Sharpie and actually bleed through the tissue to your paper underneath. Now, let me explain. This method is actually not my own. I have to give credit to Nikki. Uh, she's one of my members inside Vintage Sewing School. She uh, showed me this is her method and I thought it's brilliant, especially for those starting out. This is a really easy way to kind of get just that one pattern size onto your paper underneath. So this allows you to use butcher's paper, brown pattern paper, there's large rolls underneath. You can simply put your tissue paper on top, obviously secure it and weight it down as you normally would in any tracings, and then use a Sharpie pen to uh, trace out on your tissue so you're not making extra lines anywhere, but this will bleed through the tissue and then you'll actually see the outline on the other side, your actual pattern underneath, and then you can then go ahead and make any changes or anything you need and cut it out from there. Brilliant idea, isn't it? I thought so too. That's why I've included it here. And our fourth method is one that is a bit more traditional and that is to use a tracing wheel. So you'll find one of these tracing wheels in every sort of um, grandma's sewing box, so to say, all have a tracing wheel. So this is used by, you would put your paper that you want to use underneath. So your craft paper, your butcher's paper, whatever you've got underneath put your tissue pieces on top, weight it all down and lay it down perfectly as you need to do. And then how you get your transfer to the other side is by the tracing wheel. So you wheel it along, putting a little bit of pressure down and it actually leaves little uh, pinprick holes, little dots for you to then trace through with pencil and create your actual pattern from there. This method works really well for internal lines like uh, dart lines or pleats or anything internally in the pattern that you can't like trace around or get to. The tracing wheel method is brilliant for that one. Number five method is to simply cut out your pattern around the outside 
lay it on your paper that you want to use and then uh, you know weight it down and lay it all out properly as you normally would and then simply just trace around it with a good old-fashioned pencil <laughs> yes uh, so and then transfer all your markings from there so what is my method well a little bit of a combination but mostly I use vintage patterns or patterns that I've already made so they're already cut out as a cut out pattern so they're already finished um, and a cut out piece so I would just lay them down and lay them in a way that makes it easy for um, to alter the patterns and make adjustments from there and trace around them I would not use textures because I like to erase things and make changes and alterations. So a texture is permanent. You can't erase that. That's why I use pencil all of the time for all my patterns and I would always choose that personally. And to get my internal uh, lines, I whilst I have tracing wheels, I don't really ever use it much. I prefer to sort of put pins in and pull the pattern up and put my markings in kind of manually underneath. So that's my method that's what I've gotten used to and so that works for me I hope that's given you a few ideas into different ways that you might be able to get those pattern markings onto the pattern paper of your choice because there are so many different obviously choices um, if you're interested in other videos of different pattern paper choices or what markings you should put on there maybe not ones that included on the commercial patterns let me know down below because I can always make those videos but the question of the day is what a tracing method do you use already uh, leave us a comment down below because the more we share all of this the more ideas we all get and uh, can get better at our sewing as well so do remember to go read those comments as well because there'll be so many little goals golden nuggets of trace pattern tracing uh, information there for us all. So thank you very much for watching. Check down the description box below because I'm going to link to some other videos that I think that you'll really, really enjoy as well. Until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing, or I should say happy pattern tracing now. <laughs> Bye.